Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another AP Environmental Science screencast with your teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look at terrestrial biodiversity and ways that we can help sustain that. Uh, we saw with the reintroduction of the wolves, the Yellowstone, that there were a number of different effects or trophic cascades uh, that happened from their introductions. One, uh, managing the deer population, which allowed for certain vegetation to reestablish, and then ultimately that vegetation allowed for opening up of new habitat for certain songbirds and other birds to come to the area. So the wolves played a huge role in the um, Yellowstone ecosystem. We have seen a number of different human impacts on terrestrial biodiversity. One of the biggest ones is the human population. As human population increases, so does our resource use typically. And these activities such as agriculture, industry, and uh, other uh, economic uh, production have all had direct effects and indirect effects, some of them leading to loss of biodiversity, other direct effects such as pollution of air, water, and soil. So we need to be careful with managing resource use and how we're going to have direct and indirect effects on our earth systems. We look at biodiversity in a couple of different ways. Some people say there's a use value or instrumental value to biodiversity, where it's a, it's a, maybe a plant that has a certain usefulness to us. We use it in some sort of way. Or certain organisms may have intrinsic value, where they just have their right to exist because they're here to begin with. So depending on your school of thought and how you feel, organisms may have instrumental or intrinsic value. There's a couple of different ways that we can look at managing uh, our, or sustaining terrestrial biodiversity. And one of the biggest areas we need to look at are forests. Forests themselves provide a huge number of economic and ecological services for us, as you can see here at left in this diagram. So ecological services, some of which we've gone over in class, such as reducing soil erosion, absorbing, releasing water, purifying air and water, or storing carbon, are huge services that forests do for us uh, that ultimately uh, correspond to a, a value at some point in time. Economic services, fuel wood, lumber for building, uh, making paper, mining, livestock, grazing. These are all the different things that forest systems can do for us and provide for us directly. We have a couple of different types of forests. Our first one are old growth forests. Old growth fire forests are basically kind of like they've been in their first stage of succession. They uh, nothing has happened to either remove them from the area, so they've been uh, seriously or have not been disturbed for several hundred years or so. Um, Twenty-two percent of the world's forests um, are still considerably considered old growth forests. Here in the United States, we're actually quite low on our old growth forests, and they host many species with specialized niches. And we have a couple of the other types of forests. We have our second growth forests that have been through secondary succession and then tree plantations where we've actually gone in, removed or clear cut areas and then replanted ourselves. Deforestation or the extent of it has had a number of different effects. Decreasing soil fertility from erosion. So as water flows over the surface, it carries away those precious nutrients that are needed to keep that soil fertile. Uh, releasing CO2 into the atmosphere or accelerated flooding are just a number of different things that have happened because of deforestation. We can look at deforestation in the fuel wood crisis. In a lot of areas, uh, people are still depending on fuel wood to heat their homes and or to even cook with. So what happens is, is a number of areas are going to get deforested for that reason. Reason, MIT scientists have found a way to make charcoal from spent sugar cane. There's also been methods of using uh, presses to take paper and turn them into like kind of like little fuel wood logs. So there are a number of ways around it, but still an issue in a lot of countries. There's a number of different ways we harvest trees. First, we'll go into an area that hasn't been harvested before. It's inaccessible. We'll create a, a road, a logging road. And then from there, we'll build or move outwards, clearing land for, for either grazing or pulling those trees away. And in turn, that's how deforestation occurs. There's a number of different ways we can harvest trees, whether it's selective cutting, clear cutting, or strip cutting. Typically, clear cutting is just you go in and you'll remove all the trees from an area. Selective cutting, uh, and this is where the evolution of the paintball gun came from, where, uh, where individuals 
would go into an area with a paintball gun or a marker, mark those trees for then the lumberjacks or the industry to come in and remove those selected trees. Strip cutting is just going in and selecting certain portions of trees and then moving that road and then selecting another portion and selecting another portion. So either way, clear cutting has the most the damaging effects. Selective cutting is probably one of our best methods that we have, removing either those older trees or trees that may be more prone to disease, however the case may be. There are some advantages and disadvantages to clear cutting. Uh, one, you just get high yields right away. It happens. Um, can reforest with fast growing trees such as pines in our softer woods, and you need less skill and planning. Disadvantages though, reducing biodiversity in the area and leaves large openings in the area, which will allow fragmentation of habitats. What we can do, we can identify and protect forest areas as high in biodiversity, make sure that we're not uh, going in and clear cutting those areas, grow more timber on long rotations, or rely on more selective cutting and strip cutting. Cease logging of old growth forests and just kind of maintain on those second growth forests or on tree plantations. So there's a number of different things that we can do to kind of stop this from occurring. Uh, what else do we do? Forest resource management in the United States. So they cover for U.S. forests cover more area than in 1920. So we've definitely seen an increase in our forested areas. Not old growth forests, but definitely still an increase. Since the 60s, we're increasing area of old growth and diverse second growth forests have been clear cut. Okay, and what we end up happening is we're replacing with tree farms, uh, which ultimately decreasing biodiversity and disrupts ecosystem processes. So forest fires, we've also seen on the other end. Forest fires, depending on their intensity, can benefit or harm forests. So forest fires where there's flammable ground material is taken out is actually pretty good. We do not want a buildup of material on the forest floor. It just makes those forest fires that when they do happen, become more intense. And what they also do is they'll release valuable mineral nutrients. There are some solutions and controversy over fire management. Um, controlled burns are basically one of the best ways that we have to make sure that we do not have that buildup of flammable under material or material at the, at the floor of forests so that fires do not become more intense. Um, we can allow fires to burn on public lands if they don't threaten life and property. It's just if they just happen to occur naturally, let them go and clear small areas around properties subject to fire so that those fires do not move in and overtake and affect uh, any populations that may be there. There is some controversy over fire management. 2003, Congress passed the Healthy Forest Restoration Act, which allowed timber companies to go in and cut medium and large trees out of our national forests. Um, in return, must clear away smaller, more prone trees, uh, more fire prone trees and underbrush. So it's kind of good and a little bad at the same time. Some forest scientists believe this could increase severe fires by removing those fire resistant trees. Those older trees have the ability to stand up to more intense fires. So by removing them, those smaller trees that are in area can be more prone to fires, even though we're removing some of them. Um, there is controversy over logging in the United, in the United States, uh, but once again, this does provide a huge amount of uh, jobs and industry for an area, for lots of different areas around the United States, uh, and also recreation. Uh, some of the advantages, though, it helps meet the country's uh, timber needs, which it definitely is quite a bit of. Uh, cut areas of grow, um, cut areas do eventually grow back, but they're not those old growth forests that we see. Um, and keeping lumber and paper prices down. Remember, we're kind of being, you know, we're holding on to our forests by doing this. We're not outsourcing to other nations and externalizing a lot of the different effects. Problems is uh, we could damage nearby rivers and fisheries and uh, ample private forest land to meet timber needs. So we, why are we going to national forests? But it still happens, and it's going to probably be debated for quite some time. Uh, we do have solutions for reducing demand for harvest trees. Um, growth things such as uh, bamboo can be grown uh, and possibly used. We see it used for clothing and also for paper and a number of other things. Um, so we could do that. Tree harvesting can be reduced by wasting less wood, using less of it, and making paper and charcoal fuel from fibers that do not come from trees, like I just mentioned with bamboo. Or Kanaf is also a promising plant. 
So the American forests in a globalized economy, uh, timber from tree plantations in temperate and tropical countries is decreasing the need for timber production in the United States, which is a good thing. Uh, so this could help preserve the biodiversity in the United States by decreasing pressures to clear cut at those old growth forests that we need. And those remember, those old growths have those ability to withstand forest fires to begin with. Okay, so we're going to end here before we look a little bit more into tropical deforestation. Hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.